Here is the outline of a triangle. We'll refer to this as an inclined plane. The angle of the incline is given by theta. The x prime y prime coordinate system has the usual horizontal x axis and vertical y axis. We sometimes choose the x axis to be parallel to the incline plane and the y axis perpendicular to the incline. In the lower right triangle, alpha equals 90 minus theta. Theta and alpha here also form a right triangle, so these two angles add up to 90 degrees. Working clockwise around the entire figure, we see several right triangles and find that the two angles, alpha and theta, alternate around the figure. We will refer to this figure throughout the course. The spring on this cart launches a bearing perpendicular to the road. This rock is riding in a cart that is moving downhill at speed V0 sub X. In addition to this downhill motion, the rock is then launched perpendicular to the roadway with speed V0 sub Y. How long does it take for the rock to land back on the track and where will it land? In this triangle, the surface of the roadway lies along the hypotenuse. The angle of the incline here is theta equal 20 degrees. The problem is easiest to work when choosing the positive x-axis to point down the hill. The positive y-axis is perpendicular to the incline. With this choice of x-y coordinate system, at the moment that the rock is thrown out of the cart, its initial velocity vector is v sub 0 equals 2 i hat plus 3 j hat meters per second. This portion, 2 meters per second, is the speed of the car down the hill, and the other portion, 3 meters per second, lies entirely in the positive y direction. Here is the gravitational acceleration vector g. It points straight to the center of the earth. We need to break this vector into components that are parallel to the x-axis and parallel to the y-axis. If the angle of the incline is theta here, then we also have theta here. Then the y component of vector g is g sub y equals g cosine theta because this side of the triangle is adjacent to the angle theta. G sub y gets a minus sign because it points in our minus y direction. The x part of the vector g is g sine theta because this side of the triangle is opposite the angle theta. g sub x is positive because it points in the positive x direction. We have the same parabolic motion as always. We cannot use the range equation because a sub x is not zero. In the equation for the x part of the motion, we set x sub zero equals zero, and we set the x component of acceleration equal to plus g sine theta. The velocity equation becomes v sub x equals v sub x zero plus g sine theta t, and v sub x squared we have here. For the y part of the motion, we set y sub zero equals zero and a sub y equal minus g cosine theta. Here's the velocity equation and in the velocity squared equation, both y and y zero are zero. So the final velocity, v sub y squared, equals the initial velocity, v sub y zero squared. V sub y zero was plus three meters per second. We choose the negative root and have V sub y equal minus three meters per second. Here are the X and Y equations again. With Y equals Y zero equals zero, the Y equation is zero equals V sub y zero T minus one half G Y T squared. We cancel the T and get T equals two vy0 divided by gy, and we get 0 0.65 seconds. 
The x equation then gives x equals 2.0 meters. The x component of velocity is v sub x equals 4.15 meters per second. In unit vector notation, the final velocity just before impact is v equals 4.15 i hat minus 3 j hat meters per second. Relative to the plus x direction, the object is moving in the direction theta f equals tan inverse minus 3 over 4.15 equals minus 37 degrees. A marble is thrown up a hill such that it lands perpendicular to the hill. Given the angle theta of the incline, at what angle alpha relative to the incline should the marble be thrown? The best coordinate system, once again, is x uphill parallel to the plane and y perpendicular to the plane. Here's the gravitational acceleration vector g. And again, we need its x and y components. We have vector g equals minus g sine theta i hat minus g cosine theta j hat. The initial velocity vector v sub zero equals v sub x zero i hat plus v sub y zero j hat equals v zero cosine alpha i hat plus v zero sine alpha j hat. And the final velocity vector is minus v sub y j hat. We place the origin at the launch point so that x sub zero and y sub zero are zero. Relative to the x-axis, which is the surface of the inclined plane, the launch angle has tan alpha equals v sub y zero divided by v sub x zero. The x motion becomes this, and v sub x becomes this. v sub x squared becomes this. The final velocity component, v sub x, equals zero in our coordinate system, so the v sub x equation gives time t equals v zero cosine alpha divided by g sine theta. And we have x equals v zero squared cosine squared alpha divided by two g sine theta. Here are the x equations again. For the y motion, we set y sub zero equals zero and g sub y equal minus g cosine theta to get this. The y component of the final velocity becomes this. And here is v sub y squared. Using t from above and setting the final y equal to zero, we get this equation, which becomes tan alpha equals one half cotan theta. But that's the same thing as one half tan of pi over two minus theta. This launch angle alpha results in the path up the hill such that the marble lands perpendicular to the hill. Question B, at what angle alpha relative to the incline should the marble be thrown so that it travels the greatest distance up the hill? The only difference in the x and y equation is that we no longer have v sub x equals zero at the end of the motion. So we'll instead get time t from the y motion. Putting y equals y zero equals zero and canceling a t, this equation gives t equals two v zero sine alpha divided by g cosine theta. We put this into the x equation to get this. Replace cosine alpha sine alpha with one half sine two alpha. We want to maximize x with respect to alpha. This portion is all constant. Theta is the angle of the incline. So we take the derivative dx d alpha and set it to zero. The derivative of sine two alpha is two times cosine two alpha. Then the one half and the two cancel. This tan theta is constant. 
The derivative of sine squared alpha is 2 cosine alpha sine alpha. Here's the derivative. Combine 2 sine alpha cosine alpha into sine of 2 alpha. The derivative is 0 when this part is 0. Combining sine 2 alpha and cosine 2 alpha into tan 2 alpha, we get tan 2 alpha equals minus cotan theta, which is the same thing as cotan theta, and the same thing as tan pi over 2 minus theta. Equating the insides, we get alpha equal pi over 4 minus theta over 2. Inside the textbook, you'll find this maximization done in two more ways. First, in the unrotated coordinate system, and then second, using the launch angle equation that's quadratic in tan alpha, but the maximum range has only one value rather than two, so setting the discriminant equal to zero gives the same result. Under what conditions can two objects be launched from the ground and collide in the air? They both launch at t equals zero, but their launch points are separated by distance d along the ground. Object number one has launch velocity vector u equal ux zero i hat plus uy zero j hat equals u zero cosine alpha i hat plus u zero sine alpha j hat. Object one launches with angle alpha, Object 2 launches with angle beta. Object number 2 has launch velocity vector v equals vx0 i hat plus vy0 j hat equals v0 cosine beta i hat plus v0 sine beta j hat. The two objects collide when their x coordinates match and their y coordinates match. Time t always matches. Equating x coordinates, x1 equals x2 gives ux0t equals d plus vx0t. Solving for t, we get d divided by ux0 minus vx0. The x component of the velocity of object 1 has to be greater than that of object 2, or it will never catch up. Equate y coordinates, y1 equals y2, to get uy0t minus 1 half gt squared equals vy0t minus 1 half gt squared. Cancel the 1 half gt squareds and then a t to get uy0 equals vy0 or u0 sine alpha equals v0 sine beta. This means that the y components of velocity matches throughout the trajectories. Here is a sample plot of y versus x for the two objects. The green line is object number one. The purple line is object number two. The x component of velocity for object number one has to be great enough to catch up with object number two. They're both launched at the same instant and they meet at this point. In a baseball situation, the green dot is the batted baseball, and you are this outfielder. The ball has been hit directly towards you and will go over your head. If you wait till the ball is directly above you and then match your velocity on the ground to the x component of velocity of the batted baseball, then you are guaranteed to meet the ball when it returns to the ground. Here's an example of motion that has constant acceleration in two dimensions. The wind blows horizontally at constant speed across the baseball field, and the constant force of this wind causes a constant horizontal acceleration that is combined with the constant vertical acceleration due to gravity. Put the origin at the location of the batter with positive x outward. We have y equals y0 plus vy0t plus 1 half ayt squared, where a sub y equal minus g, and also 
x equals x0 plus vx0t plus one half ax t squared. For example, we might have a sub x equals plus 2.5 meters per second squared, putting the wind at the batter's back. Or a sub x equals minus 6.2 meters per second squared, which means that the batter is hitting into the wind. Here is a strong headwind. What will be the maximum height reached by the baseball? To answer this question, we begin by setting v sub y equals zero. When a sub x matches a sub y, both are minus 9.8 meters per second squared, and the x and y components of the initial velocity match, then the initial launch angle, theta sub zero, is 45 degrees. Then the batted baseball returns to the batter, where she could hit it again and again every few seconds.